So first up, as we've done with the other videos, let's look at the the formulae that we get given. These ones here are all around solving triangles, non-right right, right angle triangles, or in fact even right angle triangles. These are these are identities. What's significant is the number of formulae that we don't get given that one really does need to know. So one needs to know your trig ratio definitions, both in X, Y, and R form for use in the Cartesian plane, but also in opposite hypotenuse and adjacent form for use in triangles. Just remember that the hypotenuse is always the right angle, opposite the right angle. Once you've got your angle, the adjacent is the side next to it. It can't be the hypotenuse because that one's already taken, and then this one's the opposite. If this was our angle over here, this would become the adjacent, this would become the opposite. Right, this is a really, really important trig ratio, sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. But remember that that can be rearranged. So we've now got an expression for sine squared and by implication an expression for sine. Likewise an expression for cos squared and an expression for cos. And then this one here in pink, also really, really important. Tan is sine divided by cos. Okay, let's get going. Let's start off by taking a little bit of a look at kind of how trigonometry works, and I really think if one understands this, then one's better placed and better able to make a success of trigonometry. Okay, so what we've got is we've got an angle that starts at 3 o'clock on the clock face and goes around anti-clockwise. Right, so there's 90 degrees, and you can go the whole way around and in fact, it can even repeat and go around some more. Notice that although my slider says 400 degrees, I'm back at 40 degrees. But likewise, we can also go in a negative direction. So I can have an angle of, say, negative 10 degrees, and that's around there. Now notice that the, the software is actually measuring the 350, but basically an angle of negative 10 is, is just going clockwise 10 degrees. Okay, for any angle, I've got three dimensions. The length, r, of this radius, which in this case is 6. I've got an x value and a y value. And I can divide those to make some trig ratios. There are actually six ways that I can make trig ratios with them, but I only know, need to know three for core maths. So if I go and show those trig ratios, let's just move them so we can see them. I've got sine, cos, and tan of that particular angle of 60 degrees. Okay, first thing I want to illustrate and show to you is that it doesn't matter how big the circle is, how big the radius is. Obviously, my x, y, and r values are all changing, but the ratio, the ratios are staying the same, and that's because all of these triangles are similar. Okay, right, so let's take a look now. So I've got these, these, these ratios, and you'll notice that as I move around, when I get into quadrant 2, that's what I call quadrant 2, you'll notice that my x values are now negative in this quadrant. And because of that, both cos and tan are negative. Cos is x over r. Remember, r is a length and is always positive. Tan is y over x. Okay, so we've got a positive y value divided by a negative x value. So the tan of any angle in quadrant 2 will be negative. If I move around into quadrant 3, you'll notice that both x and y are negative. So sine is negative in quadrant 3 because it's y divided by r. r is a length, it's always positive. Cos will also be negative, but tan, in fact, involves the division of two negatives. So tan of angles in quadrant 3 always gives a positive result. And finally, if I go into quadrant 4, the only trig ratio that's positive in quadrant 4 is cos, which div involves dividing x by r. Okay, so let's do it back into quadrant 1 to, say, about 30 degrees. Right, I want to now introduce another angle, so I'm going to put in another angle, and I want to show you that if we went to, say, 150 degrees, that the values that we get, the actual numbers, are exactly the same size as at 30 degrees. Notice the y values are both 3, the x values are both 5.2, although this, this one uh, over here is negative 5.2 because we're in quadrant 2. So if I had to show the red trig ratios, in other words, the trig ratios of 150 degrees, 
you'll notice that I get exactly the same numbers here, a half and a half, 0 0.87, 0 0.87, and 0.58, and 0.58. The only thing that changes is the sign, is our GN, of those numbers. Right, let's, so, so, for example, sine of 150 is exactly the same size as sine of 30. Cos of 150 is the negative of cos of 30. Right, let's move around to 210 degrees, and we'll notice that, in fact, we get those same numbers occurring again. Right? So sine of 210, it's got the same size as the sine of 30. So as long as I deviate off the horizontal axis, I'll get exactly the same value for my ratio. I'll just need to work out the sign depending on which quadrant I'm in. So for example, cos of 330, cos is positive and I'm 30 degrees away from a horizontal axis. So cos of 330 will be exactly the same size as the cos of 30. Let's just go and have a look at that. Right? Notice these numbers just keep cropping up, 5.2 and the negative 3. Cos of 330 is exactly the same size and sign as cos of 30. Sine of 30 and sine of 330, same size, but different sign. Now, why am I obsessing about coming off a horizontal axis? In other words, 180 plus 180 minus 360 minus or even minus theta. Well, let's have a look what happens if I come off a vertical axis by 30 degrees. So in other words, so that word offset's doing there, let's just get rid of that. In other words, I've now got, uh, I'm 30 degrees away from the vertical axis. What we'll notice is that these numbers still keep appearing, but they've swapped over. What was an x value over here in this triangle becomes a y value. And what was a y value of 3 becomes an x value. And if you look at the ratios, if you swap x for y, swap x for y, cos becomes sine, and if you swap y for x, sine becomes cos. So you'll notice that at 30 degrees, the sine of 30 and the cos of 120 have exactly the same magnitude, right, size. They're different signs, and likewise, the cos of 30 and the sine of 120, the same size, although different signs. And this is really important in terms of where we're going on to next. Okay, so let's take a look. Right, what we established in, through that process is what we call the cast diagram. The cast diagram is a bit of a silly name for it because in fact it starts in quadrant one. What it tells us, so C-A-S-T, all students talk whatever or whatever. Okay, so what this tells us is in this quadrant, between 0 and 90 degrees, all three ratios are positive. Between 90 and 180 degrees, sine is positive, but cos and tan are negative. Between 180 and 270, tan is positive, but sine and cos are negative. And then lastly, between 270 and 360 degrees, cos is positive, but sine and tan are negative. And this is really, really important. Okay, so sometimes we get asked to, to draw a diagram, okay? And we are asked now to draw a diagram knowing that sine theta is negative and cos is also negative. Now, if we think about it, or sine, tan, cos, there's only one place where both sine and cos are negative, and that is in this quadrant over here. So I'm going to draw this now, right? And remember that sine is y over r. But remember that r is a length, because this, this minus sign could be over here, or it could be over here, or it could be where it is. All of those are the same quantity, they're negative 0, 6. But in fact, r is negative, never negative, r is a length. So in fact, this negative 3 fifths is actually made up of a negative 3 being a y value. So the y value at this point is negative 3. And r, a f 5 being our r value, if I now use Pythagoras in this, in this because this, this is a length here, it's 3. If I use Pythagoras, I'll get 4. And in fact, obviously, in this quadrant, it's actually negative 4. Right. It's really important that we draw this thing in the right quadrant. Otherwise, we're going to get the wrong sign for tan. Right. We know that in this quadrant, tan is going to be positive. But in fact, tan is y divided by x. So I get negative 3 divided by negative 4 
and I get three quarters. Okay, so I've solved the first part of the problem. I've drawn the sketch, and I've used it to determine tan theta. We now get asked to find theta. Now, I want to show you the method that I, I prefer to use here, and that is that I would put into my calculator, I would undo tan of three quarters. and I get about 37 degrees, right? Or I could undo sine of three-fifths. And I get exactly the same number, about 37 degrees. Okay, now that 37 degrees is clearly not the answer to the size of this angle. Just Let's just draw in the angle just to make sure that we understand where we are. We've come around from here. Here's the angle, right? That's clearly not the answer, the 37 degrees. The 37 degrees is the amount, it's what I call a key angle, right? So I've worked out kind of a little, little picture of a little key. It's the amount by which we are in quadrant three off a vertical axis. So just to reinforce, I could either undo tan of three quarters or I could undo sine of three-fifths. Notice I'm not putting that negative value into the calculator, and I get 37 degrees. Theta is 180 degrees from here, 180, plus that positive acute angle of 37, sorry, 37, and I get 217 degrees. Okay, it's really important that one can draw these sketches uh, as, as we have here. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at what we call reduction formulae. And what, what reduce means is to make smaller. Right? So I've summarized what we, what we did on the GeoGebra simulation over here. Whenever you move off a horizontal axis, in other words, 180 plus or minus a bit, 360 plus or minus a bit, or even just naught minus a bit, the ratio and name stays the same and we get our sign from this cast diagram. If, however, you deviate off a vertical axis, 90 minus a bit, 90 plus a bit, 270 minus a bit, and 270 plus a bit, then what happens is that our ratio changes to what's called its co-ratio. Now, the only one that you need to deal with in core maths is sine changing to cosine, sine to cos. Right, so let's have a look at this. Sine of 240 degrees. We're, which quadrant are in? Well, we're in quadrant three, and sine is negative in quadrant three. How far are we in that quadrant? Well, we are 180 degrees into that quadrant, off a, off a horizontal axis. So sine of 240 and sine of 60 are exactly the same size. However, this is obviously positive, because this is a positive acute angle, we're in quadrant one, but this was negative. We always go with where we started from. This is negative, so that will be my answer. You might say, aren't we at 240 degrees? Aren't we just 30 degrees away from the vertical axis? Yes, we are, but if we come off a vertical axis, we've got to change from the co-ratio of sine to cosine, which is cos. So negative cos, 30 degrees. Okay, let's do another one. Cos of 280 degrees. Right, at 280 degrees, we're in quadrant four. We are 80 degrees away from a horizontal axis. And if I come off a horizontal axis, I keep the ratio. Sorry, this should be cos of 80. Let's just redo that. I keep the ratio name the same, and I get cos of 80. Those two things are exactly the same size. Let's just check out the sign. Cos is positive in the fourth quadrant, and so this is the answer to that. Okay. Or you might say we're just 10 degrees into the fourth quadrant off the vertical axis, but then I must change to sine of 10 degrees. A lot of people get confused here. They start saying, shouldn't we, isn't sine negative in, in quadrant four? Yes, sine is negative in quadrant four, but we're not talking about sine in quadrant four. We're talking about cos in quadrant four. Cos in quadrant four is positive, and so the answer would just be sine of 10. You can check that on a calculator. Tan of negative 200, now that means we're starting here and we're moving 200 degrees around in a clockwise direction. We're going to land up in quadrant 2. Tan's negative in quadrant 2, right? 
what a lot of teachers like to teach is I say, well, wherever you are, you can always add 360 degrees. Because if you add 360 degrees to any, any angle, you always land right back where you started. So this one, a lot of people might say, let's add 200 degrees and then, sorry, 360 degrees, and we would get tan. Sorry, guys. Right. If you add 360 deg degrees, you'd get the same as tan of 160. Right. We'd be in exactly the same place. We'd be in quadrant 2, 20 degrees away from a horizontal axis. Tan's negative in quadrant 2, and we are, as I say, 20 degrees away from a horizontal axis, negative tan 20 degrees. We don't have the option of using a vertical axis for tan in core maths. Right, lastly, sine of 250 degrees. Well, that's fairly straightforward. We're in quadrant 3, sine's negative in quadrant 3, and we are just 70 degrees away from a horizontal axis, or 20 degrees away from a vertical axis. But remember that if we change to off a vertical axis, we need to change sine to cos, or vice versa. You might say, well, we could do a lot of this stuff on our calculator. Yes, we can, but it's important that we understand this as well. Now, cos of 180 plus a bit. Now, you're probably saying, well, how big is the bit? It actually doesn't matter, all right? What, what's helpful is to think of this as a positive acute amount. So 180 plus a little bit. We've come off a horizontal axis. We're going into quadrant three if it's just a little bit. So cos of 180 plus theta is negative cos theta. This is actually true for any size of angle. So in other words, cos of 180 plus 7,000 will be the negative of cos of 7,000. Okay, I don't know if cos of 7,000 is positive or negative, it doesn't matter, but that would be true. This is kind of an identity, something that's always true. Sine of 270 plus a little bit, and again, just think of it as a little bit. Well, sine's negative, 270 plus a bit, we're in the fourth quadrant, sine's negative in the fourth quadrant, but we need to remember that we've come off a vertical axis, so we must change to negative cos theta. Cos of minus theta minus 180, minus a little bit, minus another 180, we're in quadrant two. You might say, why don't we add 360 to this? Well, if we added 360, we'd actually get cos of 180 minus theta, which is e possibly easier to see that we're in quadrant two. We're in quadrant two, or for horizontal axis, cos is negative in quadrant two, we don't change to our co-ratio because we've come off a horizontal axis. Cos of theta minus 270, so that's over here somewhere, and we subtract 270 degrees, and we land up in quadrant 2 again. Right. Cos is negative in quadrant 2, okay, so it will be negative sine theta. The reason it's negative sine theta is because we've deviated by off a sort of vertical axis amount. This one, again, you could have rather chosen to add 360 first up, in which case you would have got cos of 90 plus theta. 90 plus theta, we're clearly in quadrant 2 off a vertical axis. Cos is negative in quadrant 2, and there's our answer. Okay, really important that you understand these. Okay, let's move on. <clears throat> All right, it's important to be able to calculate trig ratios without a calculator of special angles. So, we draw this thing called a fan. I'm a big fan of the fan. So it's got a 30 degree angle, a 45, sorry, a north degree angle, a 30, a 45, and a 60, and a 90. We have a radius of 2, which is the square root of 4. And we label these points square root of 4, square root of naught. Then as we move around, obviously the x value is getting smaller. So we just reduce it by 1, and we reduce the so we increase the y value by 1, keeping the square root signs on. So root 3, root 1, root 2, root 2, root 1, root 3, root 4, root 0, root 4. Okay, <clears throat> now, we know that sine of 30, and this is where it's important that you've learned your ratios, sine is y over r, so sine of 30, root 1, which is just 1 over r is 2, a half. Cos of 30, well, cos is r, Sorry, because it's x, which is root 3, over r. Sine of 240, what we've got to do first is we've got to reduce this, okay? 240 degrees, we're in quadrant 3, sine's negative in quadrant 3, and we're 80 degrees into quadrant 3. 
or for horizontal axis. Sorry, not 80, 60 degrees. Negative sign, 60 degrees. All right. You might say, hmm, aren't we, aren't we in fact uh, 30 degrees away from a vertical axis? Yes, we are. But then remember that we must change sign to because both of these numbers are the same. Right? If we come and have a look here, sine is our y value, root 3 divided by our r value of 2. Cos of 30 is our x value, root 3 divided by our r value of 2. So negative root 3 over 2. Tan of negative 210, well you might want to add 360 to that first to get this to tan of 150. Tan of 150, right, we're in quadrant 2, or for horizontal axis by 30 degrees. So this is going to be negative tan of 30. Now remember tan is your y value divided by your x value. So 30 degrees, 1 over root 3. Okay. For angles that are on the axes, cos of 270 degrees, for, for argument's sake, what I prefer to do is I prefer to draw a little picture Remember that, that radius that we had moving around. So we just pick a length for the radius. Suppose the radius is 3. At 270 degrees, if this line is 3 centimeters long, I can now fill in all the values. That's R is 3. Because I'm on the x axis, x is 0, and y would be minus 3. So cos is x over R, 0 over negative 3. It's just 0. On the other hand, sine of 270 degrees would be my y value divided by my r value. It would be negative 3 over 3 would be negative 1. Notice if r was 8, it would be negative 8 over 8. I'd still get negative 1. Sine of 180, so I do similarly, I just pick a radius. All right, I'm going for a longer one this time. This one's going to be 7. This point would be negative 7 on the x and 0 on the y. So sine, remember, is y over r. So sine of 180, 0. Okay, I've done that without a calculator. To be honest, we're not going to know whether you've used your calculator or not to work those out. Okay, trig identities, everyone's favorite. The reason people struggle with these is that they don't take the time to learn these identities kind of off by heart back to front. Right, so you need to know all of this stuff. Let's see how we apply it. So the first sort of type of question is, we get sine 20 equals p, and we get asked to express a whole lot of these other things in terms of p. Right. To work out cos 20, we can quite easily draw a little sketch here, which will be useful for us. If this is 20 degrees, remember that sine is y over r. You can only do that if you know that sine is y over r. So this is like p over 1. Right? Sine of 20 is p over 1. p being the y value, 1 being the r value. We can now work out our x value using Pythagoras. 1 squared minus p squared, and then square rooted. 1 minus p squared. Right. So, in fact, the cos of 20 is going to be the square root of 1 minus p squared. I want to make a link here for you. Remember, another identity says that sine of any angle squared plus the cos of that same angle squared is equal to 1. Now that is true for any angle, so it's true for 20. So sine squared 20 plus cos squared 20 is equal to 1. We know that sine is, is p, so this is going to be p squared. I'm going to subtract it across. So I get cos squared 20 is 1 minus p squared. But remember, I need to now square root both sides. When you square root, you should actually be mindful of the fact that you could have a plus or a minus, but cos 20 we know is in quadrant 1, it's a positive angle, so I get root 1 minus p squared, which is the same answer as I got over here. Right, sine of 340 is very straightforward. At 340 degrees, we're just in quadrant 4 by 20 degrees or for horizontal axis, but sine is negative in quadrant 4, so this is just negative sine 20. Negative sine 20 is just negative p. Tan of 200. Well, tan of 200, we're in quadrant 3 by 20 degrees, and tan's positive in quadrant 3, so this is tan of 20 degrees. But we know that tan is sine over cos, all right? So, in fact, we could, we could do it like that, or we could come to our diagram here, all right? 
tan of, tan of 20 would be sine 20, which is P, or it would be my Y value divided by my X value. Tan is Y over X, or sine over cos. Cos of 320, well, we're in quadrant 4, okay, and in quadrant 4, cos is positive, and I happen to be 40 degrees away from the horizontal axis. So cos of 320 is exactly the same as cos of 40. Now, the significant thing about 40 is that it's double 20. So I could write this as cos of two lots of 20. Now, there's three different flavors for cos of a double angle, right? I know about cos of 20 and sine of 20, so I can actually use any of the three. But it's probably safest to say this is 1 minus 2 sine squared 20. All right? And we know that sine of 20 is P, so in fact it's 1 minus 2 P squared. Okay. Cos of 10, now that's quite strange, all right? Because we, we've actually been dealing with kind of uh, uh, 20 degrees. If you've got a double angle formula, in a way you've got a half angle formula as well, because cos of 20 would be cos of 20 is cos of 2 lots of 10, right? So that would be 2 cos squared 10 minus 1. Right, I know what cos 20 is. I know that it's root 1 minus p squared. So I can just kind of rearrange this thing. I'm going to do this quite quickly because I'm running short of space here. But if I add 1 to both sides, I get cos of 20 plus 1. Divide by 2, I'm going to get cos of 20 plus 1 over 2. And then I'm going to square root. So in fact, cos of 10 is going to be cos of 20 plus 1 over 2. All square rooted. And that will give me cos of 10. All right. But I know that the cos of 20 is in fact itself root 1 minus p squared. So it's quite messy. But that would be cos of 10 in terms of p. All right, just while we're here, find the maximum value of this expression. Now, if you know your identities well, you'll say that looks like the double angle formula for sine. That looks like, in fact, 9 lots of Two sine two theta cos two theta. All right, which in fact is the same as the square root of nine lots of sine of four theta. All right, notice that's our double angle for me. That's two lots of two theta. Now, the thing with sine is that the biggest value sine ever gets, if we remember our sine graph, is one. So the biggest value that I can get inside here is 9. And so the maximum value of this whole expression will be the square root of 9 or 3. Okay, and that's just worth remembering that any trig graph has a kind of maximum or minimum value. So one can solve this rather difficult looking expression by making use of identities. Right, we're now going to get into proving identities. And the crucial thing here is to know your basic identities really well. Next thing that's important is you never put the two sides equal to one another. You use left and right hand side. We try and change tan into sine and cos typically. If we've got two terms on the one side and one on the other, then we'll combine them. And then continually we ask ourselves, where am I? What am I trying to get? So let's look at these two examples over here. So the first is the one on the left. All right. I've got two terms on the left and only one on the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these two terms. The fraction type that I'm going to need to use is cos theta into 1 plus sine theta. Right. The one on the left, I've multiplied by 1 plus sine theta on the bottom, so I need to multiply the 1 by 1 plus sine theta, and I get 1 plus sine theta. The one on the right, I've multiplied the 1 plus sine theta by cos theta, so I need to multiply the cos theta by cos theta, and I get cos squared theta. All right. Now, remember I said... And this is, so this is the left-hand side. Remember I said that we need to keep asking ourselves, well, what have I got and where am I trying to get to? Well, where I'm trying to get to is I'm actually trying to get to tan theta. Now, tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. I've got a cos theta on the bottom, right? So I want to get a sine theta on the top 
and then a 1 plus sine theta to cancel with this 1 plus sine theta. Right. You might say, well, we've got a kind of a 1 plus sine theta, but unfortunately we can't cancel there. Now this is where it really helps to know your identity as well, because 1 minus cos squared theta is actually sine squared theta. So this is actually sine squared theta plus a sine theta over a cos theta 1 plus sine theta. Okay, where am I trying to get to? I'm trying to get to a sine theta over cos theta because then I would be able to say, right, that's tan theta which is the right hand side. Okay, and now I think most of you can probably see that what I need to do is I need to take a sine theta out on the top and then I get a 1 plus sine theta over a cos theta 1 plus sine theta. And these can divide out and I get the required result. Right, this one over here, again I'm going to work with the left hand side. Sine 2x is a wonderful thing to see because there's only one way, there's only one double angle formula for sine, so that's 2 sine x cos x. Now, there's a slight problem here because we're not sure which one to use. All right, I've got 2 cos squared x minus 1, I've got 1 minus 2 sine squared x, and I've got cos squared x minus sine squared x. So that's going to be a good one to use because I've got cos squared x minus a sine squared x, and then I've got plus a sine squared x. So in fact, this one is very straightforward because what's happened is the sine squared x is subtract on the bottom, <coughs> and I get 2 sine x cos x over cos squared x. I can divide a cos x on the top and a cos x on the bottom, and I've now got 2 sine x over cos x, which is just 2 tan x, which is equal to my right-hand side. Remember, even if you're not really sure what to do, do something. You'll get a mark just for using one of your identities correctly, right? And try and show, try and show some working. And yeah, the nice thing about a trig identity is you do know when you're right. I guess the flip side of that is you know when you haven't got it either. But Okay, we're going to move on to trig equations. All right, and we're going to find general solutions here. Now, the way I like to do these, I would go sine theta equals negative root 3 over 2. Now, I know many teachers will sort of work out undo sine of this, and then you have learned that sine, you can go, the answer you get, and 180 minus the answer. Going back to my trig board, what I want to do is I want to work out the right size angle, although not necessarily in the right quadrant, what I call a key angle. So I'm going to undo sine of root 3 over 2, positive. All right, and I get 60 degrees. I know that I want sine to be negative and that that happens in those two quadrants. I get into quadrant 3 by going 180 plus my key angle, right? Or 360 minus my key angle. So 360 minus my key angle it's going to give me 300 degrees. Now those are my two, what I would call standard solutions, and to each of those, I could add 360 degrees a whole number of times as often as I like, or subtract. So plus 360K, 300 degrees plus 360K. Right, notice that we got two answers, going back to those trig graphs, this graph has got a normal period, we expect two angles, Two answers per 360 degrees. This is what is called the general solution. And what I must say somewhere is that K has to be a whole number, positive, negative, or zero. Okay. All right. So, so that's a standard trig equation. I know a lot of you don't use the key angle, but make sure that you can get these two answers. All right. Tan of 2 theta is root 3. So once again, I'm going to find out my key angle, and I'm going to undo tan of root 3. If it was a negative root 3, I'd still put in a root 3. I get 60 degrees. Okay, I want tan to be positive. Now I want you to watch what happens here with tan. So um, I want to be in quadrant 1 by 60 degrees, or in quadrant 3, that's the other place where tan is positive, by 60 degrees. Now these two vertically opposite angles are equal, which means that this is a straight line. So the weird thing with tan, right, if you add 180 here, so this 
This, this angle is obviously 60. This one here is 240 degrees. But tan assumes this value of root 3 at 60 degrees and then every 180 degrees thereafter. So my general solution with tan, I can just take one of my answers and add 180k. Right. Now, what actually happens here is that this two theta has affected the period. We will get twice as many solutions as possible. And when we divide through, we can see why we're going to get twice as many solutions as possible. We're going to get 30 degrees plus 90k. All right. So there's our general solution. Remember, normally we would expect two solutions in 360 degrees. I'm going to get twice as many. I'm going to get four. Let's write them down. If k is zero, I get 30 degrees. If I add 90 once, I get 120. If I add 90 again, I get 210. If I add 90 again, I get 300 degrees. If I add 90 again, I get 390 degrees, which is the solution, but not to this question. So they're the four solutions, twice as many as usual. Right, let's look at some more examples. If we've got sine and cos in the same equation with the same angle, then I can use the trick of dividing both sides through by cos. Just remember, sine over cos is tan. Tan of 3 theta equals 2, all right? I get a key angle, undo tan of 2, it's about 60 degrees, uh, sorry, 63 degrees, all right? And so my answers are going to be 3 theta is 63 degrees plus 180k, my general solution, all right? And if I divide through by 3, I'm going to get theta is 21 degrees plus 60k. Right, there's my general solution, k, an integer. All right. This one over here, we can't do that because we've got a different angle. So what we do here is we make use of the trick of changing the, the cos 3 theta into sine of 90 minus 3 theta. Right. Now, if we've got sine equal to sine, there are two possible ways that, that can happen. Either theta is 90 minus 3 theta, and I could add 360k to that. Or theta could be 180 minus 90 minus 3 theta. And I could add 360k to that. Just a little kind of digression here. If I had sine theta equals sine 10, most of you would say, oh, could yeah, we just drop the sine and, and theta is 10? Or... 370 or 730, in other words, 360 degrees. However, there's a whole other family of solutions, and they come about from the fact that sine of 180 minus something is exactly the same as sine of that thing. So, so there we see it, that in fact we could also have sine of 180 minus 10 would be 170, all right? So 170 would be another sort of branch of solutions. <coughs> Each of these you just simplify, and solve for theta. So our general solution is going to be theta. We've got four theta, so we get 22 and a half plus 90k. Here we get plus the three theta, so we get minus two theta. So we get theta is negative 45 plus 180k. In fact, minus 180k, <coughs> but the plus or minus 180k is arbitrary because k can be positive or negative anyway. All right, don't forget to say k is an element of z. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Right, this one over here, I'm not going to solve. And it's an, uh, sorry, let's do this one next. If you've got tan equal to tan, then theta plus 20 is just equal to the other angle plus 180k. Remember, 180k for tan. Okay, and now if I solve this, I just get negative theta is negative 20. So in other words, theta is 20 degrees minus 180k. K an element of z. Right, this one over here works on the fact that I've got a double angle identity here. This is a cos 2 theta. And you see why it's so important to know your identity as well. Cos 2 theta is minus a half. Right, so this one's kind of game over. Um, it's what I would describe as a vanilla flavored trig equation. It's going to have twice as many solutions as usual. I'd find a key angle and then I'd move from there. <laughs>